Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. Appreciate everybody coming today. And let me just start with an opening comment, and then I'm happy to take your questions. First off, uh, Coach Babers will return for the 2022 season. Um, we're disappointed how the season ended. The last three games were tough, and I respect that emotions are running high. I want to thank our seniors, in particular our super seniors, who led the 2021 20, team and did so, I think, extraordinarily well. They're outstanding young men. They've represented our program, our university, and our community very, very well. And uh, they're forever orange. Overall, I'm pleased with how this team competed this season. We saw growth in a number of areas. Um, with our running game, the emergence of Sean Tucker, who's as good a running back as there is in the country and should be a first-team All-American. Our offensive line performed well, especially when we had our starting five intact and playing together. The defense improved dramatically this year, uh, and we did that despite losing three starters in the secondary to the NFL. Um, but we also need to continue to improve on that side of the ball as well. We have the potential to have 18 of 22 starters return next year. That would provide us a terrific nucleus to build upon. I've met with Coach Babers multiple times over the past several weeks. Given those factors, I believe the best decision is for him to continue to lead this program. Our young men respect Coach Babers, and they play hard for him. We all know what the expectations are for 2022. The schedule will be challenging as it is every year in the ACC. Um, that said, we need to know we, we need to win more games. We all want to win more games. We all want to have play that 13th game. Our work on the 2022 season began yesterday. We'll address our deficiencies aggressively. Um, our assistants are out on the road recruiting now and Coach is finishing up meeting uh, with individuals of the team, and then he'll hit the road recruiting later this week. We have a big recruiting weekend on campus this weekend. Retaining coaches White and Coach Schmidt is an important building block for the 2022 season. I also want to thank Coach Gilbert, Faree, and Reynolds for their contributions, and I wish their families well in their future endeavors. I want to thank our fans and our community and our students for their support. I hear and I feel your frustration. We all have the same goals, win more games, but do it the right way. I'll do everything I can to support Coach Babers and his staff. We'll need support from our alumni. We'll need support from our donors, our fans, and our students to achieve the success that we all covet. So with that, I'm happy to take questions that you may have. John, I wanted to go back to what you said about expectations. Can you lay out what your specific expectation for this football team is in 2022? Yeah, Brent, I, you know, I'm, I'm never going to put just a, you know, a, a pure number out there in terms of the number of wins. But listen, we want to be playing that 13th game. And that's your goal every year. You want to play that 13th game. And if you play the first 12 really well, the 13th game could be an ACC championship game, and then you could play be, you know, beyond that. And we want to be we want to be we want to be competitive in our division. You know, the year we went ten and three, we finished second in our division. And I said this when we when I got here, is if you're competitive in your division near the top of your division, the ACC, you're going to be relevant nationally. And we were we were ranked. So we've done it. Now we need to get back um, to where we're on the right side of the ledger, the win loss record. Seven of the fourteen teams in the ACC this year. We're either five and seven or six and six. So that's half the conference. So we've got to, we've got to break out of that, that, that log jam. And that's, the, that's what we want to do. Dan? John, you spoke about the fact that you had multiple conversations with Dino, and there's yeah. a bunch of different reasons why you're keeping him 
What are those reasons that, that stand out the most from those conversations as to why we're having a year seven? Well, again, I, I said back a year ago and in the spring that it was important for me to see development and progress in this year's team, and, and we saw it. And again, we saw it in the defensive side of the ball, and you saw, you know, still relatively young defense. Now we do have to place, replace our three starter defensive linemen, um, but we've got a young defense, and we made great strides there. You also saw what we did with the run game. Um, so it's there's there's building blocks there. We need to address our deficiencies. We need to throw the ball better, more effectively. If we can do that, you complement what Sean Tucker, what he's become. The growth of our offensive line, the fact that Garrett's a, a dual threat quarterback, we can have a very dynamic offense. Um, and we need to obviously we need to address special teams. Special teams were they were an issue this year. And we're gonna we're gonna as I said, we're gonna deal with those issues and confront our deficiencies head on. Chris? John, how much did a uh finances and maybe a lack of desire to, to pay a buyout? None, Chris, none. I mean, buyouts are a part of college football in 2021. Okay, that's just that's that's part of the environment of college football. Had no impact whatsoever. Strictly football. This is strictly football. Any? Yeah, we do every we do everything year to year here, and that's how we've always that's how we've always operated. Um, I will tell you that when we extended Coach Babers three years ago, that extension goes beyond 2022. Again, it's my desire, and that's why I'm going to do everything I can to support this program, so that he's our coach and we have the success that we all covet. Thank you, John. This question's obviously been hanging out there all season long about whether or not Dino would be back right. next year. And you, you mentioned you wanted to see improvement and progress. At what point did you make the decision? You know, was it was it going into the bye week at five and four and you felt like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with this, I've seen enough. I mean, can you give us a, an idea of the timeline in your head when you felt like, all right, I've, I've seen what I need to see? Steve, I, I, there, there wasn't like, okay, a defining moment. It was just when you see the growth that we had, you see the success that we had in certain areas of our play, the change that we made in our offensive philosophy, right, which is, you know, was a dramatic change, but it was the right change because it gave us the best chance to win, right? So when you see all that, and again, when you have 18 to 22 starters potentially coming back, we're a really young team, that it was, it was gradual, but I came to that conclusion over a period of the entire season. So I'm never going to make a knee-jerk reaction or decision. I'm not going to make decisions in an emotional moment because more often than not, if you do, you'll make the wrong decision one way or the other. So this is, you know, this is something that you know, I evaluated the program starting with really with spring practice. Thank you. We'll go up to Tommy Slater. Hey, John. Hey, Tommy. Still would have expected to see some coaching movement changes that we've seen over the last day had the sixth win happened. In the you know, Coach and I, we, talk, we talked about the 2022 season. We started that a couple weeks ago. And, and the whole goal is always to get better. You can never be complacent. Um, the decisions are ultimately his, okay? And I want to stress that. I don't dictate to any of our coaches decisions they make in terms of their staff. What we, what we do talk about is, all right, how do we get better? And if you need to make changes on your staff to get better, then I'm going to leave it to that coach to do it. Thank you. We'll go to Nate Mink right here. John, did, did you and Dino alter the contract at any point to maybe allow yourself to be more aggressive, attracting some assistant coaching candidates or help you out on the back end of the deal? Yeah, Nate, I'm, I'm not going to get into any contractual terms, you know, whatsoever. You know, but listen, we've, we've invested in this program over the past five years, and, and we've done it with the support of the chancellor. We've done it with the support of the board, and we're going to continue to invest in it. Chris, um, John, the, the recruiting class for next year doesn't look on paper great to us, maybe because – Coaching staff has faced this perception all season. Um, it'll face a perception heading into next season, too. How concerned are you 
with, with recruiting and the possibility that there's like a two year sort of talent gap because there's been coaching questions? Well, I think Chris, you know, number one, the recruiting class, you know, it's, it's not over yet, right? We have the early signing period in February, then we have the transfer portal and we, we need to use the portal to our advantage. Um, and, you know, I'm, you know, the ratings and all that stuff. Um, this is this has never been a program that attra that's attracted you know, you know, high four star, five star recruits. This has always been a program that's developed players, and I think you've seen that we've been able to do that, right? You see the three guys who went to the NFL from the secondary. You know, I think Trill might have been a four star, but if he was a three star, Cisco was you know was a three star. Right, you look at Sean Tucker, you look at what he's become. All right, he came in as a three star, he's a five star now. So part of what we need to do is, de is develop players. Um, that's incredibly important. And we do need, and I want, we need to invest in our recruiting staff and have more people in our recruiting department. And I'm gonna need our alumni, our football alumni to support that effort. Is that something you could do quickly enough to impact next year? Yes, yes, with their support. Thank you. We'll go to Dan Tortora. Um, you spoke about the fact that you know this coaching staff, how important it is in recruiting and everything. With the consistent coaching changes from year to year, how do you address that? With being out that there's been coaches coming in and out since he's been here, and you also spoke about the importance of special teams and having a leader there as well moving forward. Yeah, I think again, the special teams is an area that will that he will address that will address as a program. You're always, you know, you're, you're almost always going to have change in your coaching staff, right? And when you have guys who leave, who can, you know, grow their career by going to different places, that's part of it. Um, I think, again, retaining coaches White and Coach Smith was really, really important to us. Um, and as Coach said last night in his release, you know, the remainder of the staff uh, will fill that out and will fill that out quickly. Thanks, John. We'll go to Connor Smith. Syracuse has the most players in the transfer portal right now. They have 10. Is that number concerning at all to you? Is that, you know, does that play a role in any decision you make coaching? You, you know, some of, some of the kids who are in the portal are, are going to graduate. They're going to walk out of here with Syracuse degrees. Curtis Harper walked out of here with an undergrad and a graduate degree. Um, so that's great. They, they did what they came to go to college for. They graduated and have eligibility left. So they have the right to go play some someplace else. and. And they should exercise that right. I think a lot when you look who is in the portal, a lot of it's playing time, right? You know, and that's that's the reality. Of the transfer portal in 2021, we need to use the portal to our advantage. We're going to have kids go in the portal. We need to be active in the portal and identify kids who have the right character, who have the right football skills, who can be good fits in this program to help complement and build up build out our program. Thank you. We'll go to Stephen Bailey. Hey, John. I think when you watch this team toward the end of the season, it was pretty clear that the lack of a vertical passing game, maybe special teams aside, was the biggest issue. What gives you confidence that this can get better? And, and obviously, you have an offensive coordinator vacancy. How does that fit in? What are you looking for there to, I guess, um, you know, help with that? Yeah, I mean, Coach is ultimately he'll hire the offensive coordinator. But we've talked about somebody who's who's worked and has developed quarterbacks. I think that's important. Garrett's got ability. We've got to refine that ability. You know, he didn't start till week four, so the off season is going to be critically important for him and the wide receivers to just get more comfortable with one another. The wide receivers we had were relatively young when you look at that roster as well. So their development in the offseason, the development of that passing game is, is going to be critically important. And if we can do that and we can throw the ball effectively, again, when you complement what we did with a run game, when you have a first, you know, first team All-American running back, this can be a really difficult offense to prepare for. And that's what we need to get to, and that's our goal. Yeah, I think in every system is refined year to year. I mean, it's, it's, you know it, Stephen, across the country, every system is refined. Defense, offense, special teams, every single staff, all 130 schools that play FBS football, they're refining their systems. You know, to, to say, well, this is what the system was six years ago, no. 
because because this this sport this sport is always in a constant change and evolution on the offensive side on the defensive side and the special team side thanks john we'll go to steve Infante. you mentioned the young talent in this program the potential there for 18 starters to come back you've got some special players in the program shot soccer here williams who's chest and so on and so forth do, do you get the input of, of the players on a decision like this, given the day and age we live in with the transfer portal and, and whatnot? I mean, did you, did you get their opinion, I guess, at all, and did they have a say? You know, Steve, you know, what they have a say is they have a say now with the portal where they go, where they go to school and where they go play, right? Decisions in terms of, of coaches, those are decisions that I make and I consult with the appropriate leaders in the university and, I, and, and outside the university as well in terms of trustees, et cetera, that type of thing. I do. You know why? They play hard for him. They played hard for him this year. They played, we, they played hard last year in a really challenging year. We were just, out, we were just outmanned, right? We, our offensive line was depleted. I think the Notre Dame game, they were ranked second at the time. We start five true freshmen. But we played hard. If, 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 they, if we weren't playing hard, that sends a clear message. But our, our, our team played hard all year. Time for a couple more. We'll go to Brent and then Chris. John, you mentioned the support you need from everybody, fans, alums, uh, everybody involved there. Why is this plan the plan that's going to work? Brent, I think, I think it'll work because, again, in the areas of the progress that we made this year, in last year I, I remember when I, I met with you guys and I said, you know, we need to address our offensive line and our inability to run the ball. And we addressed that. And you need, we need and we will, we'll address our shortcomings, you know, head on. And it's going to be critical to three hires that we make. Tony White was a terrific hire. Mike Schmidt was a terrific hire. We need to make three really good hires. Thanks, John. Go to Chris and then Steven. Uh, John, one of the, the hot button issues has been game management, clock management. Mm -hmm. Maybe we wouldn't be here if, if there were certain decisions made a little bit differently. What's your assessment of how Dino has done there? And have you had any conversations about you know, whether that can get better? We, we, we've talked about it. To, to, to me, we, we've talked about it. It's just at times I, I felt we weren't as efficient, right, getting calls from upstairs on offense from upstairs down to the field in the game. You know, we, we need to be more efficient. We need to be more crisp there. Game management and clock management, I mean, you can second guess that. You know, people can second guess that every single day. And it doesn't matter whether it's Coach Babers or any other program. You can say, well, if, hey, if you did this and this played out and that scenario played out, this would have happened. But, you know, you make hundreds of decisions in a football game. You know, the head coach does hundreds of decisions. Um, but, but what we talked about is, is, is the efficiency of getting our calls in, getting them down, getting in, and running our plays efficiently. Do you feel confident there's a plan in place for that to get? Yes, better? yes. Time for two final questions. We'll go to Stephen and then Anish. Hey, John, you talked about the importance of bringing Tony White back. I, I suspect when you go through a process like this, you look at the other side of the coin and what might be next if you were to move on from Dino. Does Tony check any of those boxes given what he's done with the 3 3 5 and the kind of carte blanche he has on defense? I guess if you're not willing to go there, what jumps out to you about his leadership? Number, number one, I think he's a really good strategist. He's an excellent recruiter. He connects with his, with the, with the, with his, uh, with his team, with his defense. They, they play hard for him. I'm excited to get another year in that system for that group. You know, last year when you have two new offensive coordinators and no spring ball and COVID, you're doing everything by Zoom, the install is really, really hard. You know, what we accomplished this year I thought was was significant on defense, and to see built you know to see him build upon that for next year. I think Tony White's an outstanding football coach, and and, and I'm not saying that you know someday he has the qualities to be a head coach. Thanks, John. We'll go to Anish for our last question. Um, yeah. So over the last few years, you've been assistant coach at the relief of the team. But how 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 many assistant coaches do you think need to be relieved before you realize that it falls on Dino and Dino's job is on the chopping block? Well, again, I think, you know, it's, it's, 
in, in some areas, hey, if you blow the whole thing up, that might be the most popular thing. You bring in a new head coach. That new head coach is going to want to bring in their staff. Okay, that means Tony White's not here. Well, we just had a defense that's like a top 25 defense. So why, why would you do that? Right? We just had a run game, which is the best in the ACC. So what we've got to do is we've got to find quality assistant position coaches of the caliber of, of Tony and Mike and the others that, again, we'll know quickly and, and shortly in terms of whether they're going to be with our program or not to continue to build this program. You're, the quality of your assistant coaches is incredibly, incredibly important, particularly in the sport of football. John, thank you very much, and thank you to the members of the media who joined us today. We appreciate it, and have a good day. All right, thanks, everybody.